Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter four talking about performance testing task and continuing ahead with the next segment of it, which is 4.3 executions. Of course, in all our tutor tutorials so far, we have understood that how to plan for the performance test, how to analyze, design and implement the performance test scripts. And now it's time you start executing them. But of course, there are certain protocols to be taken into account while you are executing the performance test. And that's what we'll be talking about as a part of our tutorial today. So performance test execution does involve generation of load against the SUT. And that plays a pretty important role in performance performance test because it's all about the load being generated. If the load is generated appropriately, you get outcomes according to that. If the loads are not generated properly or maybe the load generators are not configured properly, you may have different outcomes. So these load generations are basically to generation of the load against the SUT according to a load profile, which is usually imp uh, implemented by the performance testing scripts invoked according to the given scenario monitoring all parts of the environment and collecting and keeping all the results and information related to the test. Usually, advanced load testing tools or hardnesses perform these tasks automatically. Now, generally, if you talk about these tools, these advanced tools basically mean that we are talking about load runner, we are talking about JMeter, and they will be definitely having a load generation agents, which will be uh, creating multiple threads of the scenario and applying the load on the execution. Now, performance tests are usually focused on a steady state of the system when the system's behavior is stable. For example, when all simulated user uh, or threads are initiated and per are performing work as designed. When the load is changing, for example, when new user is added, the system's behavior is changing and it becomes more difficult to monitor and analyze the test result. The stage of getting to the steady state is often referred to as the ramp up and the stage of finishing the test is often referred to as the ramp down. Now here we are trying to understand that how and why the amount of users will be added into the system when it comes to the stability of an application, which generally means that when you start working with a scenario, you do have some limited number of users to begin with, but certainly you will be adding more number of users from time to time and then including uh, multiple uh, load being increased on the scenario. And that's what you call it as ramp up, which is generally at the beginning. So we had some performance operational profiles being understood in our previous tutorials. And there I gave you the example of certain graphs, which talks about the same, that how exactly the ramp up can happen and they continue for a certain duration of time. And then we come to the ramp down where we reduce the number of users or reduce the load on the system and we do capture the same. But at both the points, we are making sure that the system is gradually increasing and the performance is going down and uh, not just going below the expectation. And at the same time, the load generators must be capable of capturing all the events which are taking place and should be uh, you know, captured in such a way that they are being presented well as well. Now, during the ramp up, it is advisable to implement incremental load stress to monitor the impact of steadily increasing load on the system's response. Now, when we talk about incremental load state, which generally stands for uh, if we have 30 users to get started with, you don't really add another 30 users altogether. Maybe you can add 10 in 10. 10 seconds of 10, 15 minutes of time, then another 10 in another 15 minutes of time, another 10 every 15 minutes of time. Now that's where we call it as a steady incremental growth on the load to see the difference between the behavior which happens at different intervals. So if I suddenly add 30 people and the system stops responding or crashes, then I would it will be difficult for me to recognize that at what point actually the system crashed was that exactly 30 users or was that just with 15 users? So we always go in an incremental approach to add number of users in ramp up way. And uh, this ensures that sufficient time is allocated for the ramp up and that the system is able to handle the load. And then once it is steady, the state has been reached, it is good practice to monitor the both the load and the system responses are stable 
and that the random variations are not substantial. So these are pretty much the important things which you need to capture during the execution and need to make sure that the adding of the load or the number of users working on that scenario must be incremental, not spike, as far as you're doing spike testing at that point of time. It is also important to specify how failure should be handled to make sure that no system issues uh, are introduced. For example, it may be important for the user to log out when a failure occurs to ensure that all resources associated with that users are also released. So we may have exception handling or error handling situations being integrated with the scenario so that when anything goes wrong, then we allow the logout of the user to happen so that he can move to directly the user end and perform the ex the you know end functions and based on that the memory what he has allocated the resources what this user has allocated will also be released for the other users to do that it should not be in such a way that it has an error and the user still takes hold of those resource utilization and uh, still creates impact on the scenario not being working on it Additionally, to add, if monitoring is built into the load testing tool and it is properly configured, it usually starts at the same time as the test execution. However, if standalone monitoring tools are used, monitoring should be started separately and the necessary information collected such that subsequent analysis can be carried out together with the test results. Now, of course, you do understand that there are a lot of automation performance tools which gives you the freedom of having inbuilt monitors. But sometimes they do not fulfill all the expectations what you may need and you make use of an external tool to do the same job. Now, if it is inbuilt, definitely the pre-configured monitors will automatically kick off uh, automatically kick off as soon as you start with the execution. But if it is an external tool, then you need to make sure that you click the, both the buttons at the same time. That one in the load testing tool and second is the performance monitoring tool, which will be capturing uh, events right from the beginning itself. So you should not be having a lag or a gap between the start of the execution and start of the monitoring tool to capture those statistics, which may create variant results and may not be, you know, sub helpful to derive an outcome. Now, test execution is often monitored using Performance Test Tools Console and real-time log analysis to check for issues and errors in both the test as well as the SUT. This helps to avoid needlessly continuing with running large-scale tests, which might even impact other systems if things go wrong. For example, if failure occurs, component fail for the generated load are too low or too high sometimes. Now, these tests can be expensive to run, and it may be necessary to stop the test or make some on-the-fly adjustments to performance test or the system configuration if the test deviates from the expected behavior. Now, of course, the capturing of the runtime logs will definitely help you to determine if there is a point continuing with the run or not. Because if you see some weird behaviors coming up uh, right from the execution beginning, then there is no point running a test which is quite longer for four to five hours of time. And you can definitely terminate the test, refigure out the problem, refactor it, redesign the scenario, and then run it. So what all, what all we mean to say at this point of time that during the execution, keeping an eye on the outcomes of or behavior of the scenario <clears throat> will lead you to uh, run a healthy execution. And at least when you invest some of your time, like four to five hours to run a particular scenario, you should have some desirable outcomes which can be captured in terms of analysis to observe it. But if the scenario goes wrong or has a weird behavior right in the beginning, there's no point running it for another few hours just to wait for that to conclude. And that will not be any kind of, any sort of beneficial to us by investing few hours of that execution. In some cases, when running performance testing in an automated way, for example, as a part of continuous integration, it checks, uh, the checks must be done automatically since manual monitoring and intervention may not be possible. In this case, the test setup should be able to recognize any deviations or problems and issues and alerts. So you can definitely insert certain statements in your script, which will be notifying you at different point of time that if these things have happened or not, could be your transaction, could be your error statement or error code, or uh, you know, update or from the exception handling point of view that if the exception was executed or not. So those counts will be reflected on the 
panel of the execution board and that will give you the count of number of errors which has taken place or number of things which has successfully completed and the count of transaction will keep you posted about that. Also, this approach is easier to implement for a regression performance test when the system behavior is generally known but may be more difficult with exploratory performance test or large-scale expensive performance test that may need adjustment to be made dynamically during the test itself. Now, of course, this is again from the point of the regressions which you conduct in order to perform the regression testing and uh, may have definitely a lot of things to be taken into account as these are quite expensive. Now, if you talk about just running a performance test, it's expensive altogether. But talking about running a regression performance test, you're running a lot many things put together. So there are a lot of things which need to be taken into account that it sometimes can be definitely difficult to observe the system's behavior uh, if you know that. So if you know or from the previous executions that what ex exactly to you know, get impacted by the change, the regression testing can become simpler and easier. Otherwise, it will be definitely complicated. And if required, some of the adjustments should be made right on the go, which will give you the desired outcome at that point of time. Well, that was all to talk about the executions of the performance test. I hope you had a good understanding of that. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.